Hello, this is Mr. Stansberry. I'm going to take you through the seven A notes on distance between two points. Okay? At the end of this, you should be able to find the distance between two points and be able to determine the characteristics, characteristics of polygons by finding the distance between uh, two points. Okay? So, uh, first thing, there are two main ways of finding the distance between two points. Okay, so we're going to take a look at example one from page 205 to look at those two different ways. Okay, so you can find the distance, we're going to find the distance between negative 2, 1 and 3, 4. So the distance between um, point A and point B. Uh, the book take, takes you through this way here, which is using the distance formula, which, which works out great, works every time. Um, you did this in geometry as well. So um, let's take a look at doing this with the distance formula. Okay, so with that, we've got um, distance equals the square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. So again, this is, I'm going to call this here x1, y1, and x2 and y2 because that's the first point that's why they get the ones and that's the second point that's why they get the twos okay so if we're following right along with this we take x2 which is 3 so we go 3 minus x1 is negative 2 and then we square that and then we take y2 which is 4 minus and then uh, y1 is 1, so 4 minus 1 squared. Okay, So distance is going to be square root of a minus a negative, so that's 3 plus 2, so that's going to be 5 squared plus 4 minus 1 is 3 squared. So the distance on this one here is going to be the square root of 5 times 5 is 25 plus 9 so the distance is the square root of, what, 34? Okay. And if the square root of 34 does not satisfy you, you want to know what the actual decimal answer is, um, that would be okay too. This is actually, officially the square root of 34 is more accurate than the decimal answer that you're going to get, so you can just leave it like square root of 34. But again, if you really want to know what it is, then you can just take the square root of 34 and do this, do 5 point, oops, I already forgot what it was, 5 point, let's do 5.83, 5.83, and if you decide that you really need to have it in the decimal, and it doesn't specify to not leave it as a decimal, to, this is the exact answer, so this is exact, and then if you write 5.83 where you have to round it off, you would have to do this, 3SF, which stands for three significant figures, meaning implying that you rounded it, which you did. Okay, So honestly, probably your best bet is just to leave it like that, but this, if you left it as d equals 5.83, and you put the three significant figures next to it, then that would be fine too. Okay, So that's one way to do it, distance formula. Another way to do it, is to actually use the Pythagorean theorem, which is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Okay. So with that, let me show you what we do with that. Okay. So basically, what you want to do is plot these two points on a graph, and then turn them into a triangle. Okay. So a is at negative two one. So negative two one. There's a. And then B is at 3, 4. So 1, 2, 3, up 4. There is point B. Okay. Now what you want to do is just turn this into a right triangle. And you can either go up and over like that, or you can go over and up like that. doesn't matter. So I'm going to just go over and then down like so. Ooh, come on, that's pretty good straight lines for, for me. And the nice thing about this is this makes a nice right triangle triangle here if I connect these two points now here's where the hard part comes in okay 
So now we have a right triangle where we can use the Pythagorean theorem. Okay. So really what you're doing here is, here's our two legs. There's the, like say the A squared and the B squared. Or really I guess that would be A squared because it's crossed from side A. That would be B squared, doesn't matter. But anyway, this is one, two, three, four, five. So this has got a distance of five here, and this has got a distance of three here, right? So to do this, you would just do five squared plus three squared equals C squared. So 25 plus nine equals C squared. And look, that should look familiar from right over here. 25 plus nine, 25 plus nine. And we got to square root the C squared to get rid of the the squared, so we get c equals the square root of 25 plus 9, which is the square root of 34. Okay, so that's another way to do it, is by basically just graphing it. And you don't even need to have graph paper. You could just, it makes it a little bit handier to have graph paper, but as long as you can figure out how far apart those points are on the x and the y, then you're good to go. Okay, so whichever way you want to do it is fine by me. Okay, let's take a look at another example. Okay, so example two from page 206 says use a distance form to determine if the triangle AB, determine if the triangle ABC, where A, R, A is negative 2, 0, B is 2, 1, and C is 1, negative 3, is equilateral, isosceles, or scalene. Okay. Um, I'm going to do the Pythagorean theorem way because I find that a lot easier, especially if I'm looking to try to see if this, what kind of triangle this is. So I'm going to graph these th these three points. So we got negative two zero. Okay, so that's point A. Point B is at two one. Okay, and that is B, and then point C is at one negative three. So that's point C. Ooh, that was terrible. See, that's what I got for getting all excited about how great the lines I drew earlier. All right. So we got to try to figure out what kind of triangle that is. Okay. So it, in order to figure out what kind of triangle it is, these are all class of equilateral isosceles and scalene are all classified by side length. So we got to figure out what each one of these side lengths are. Okay. So. Again, now that we've drawn it on there, let's use a different color. Now I can figure out, I can make, to figure out what the length of AB is, I can just figure out this triangle here, which has got one, two, three, that's got a length of four, and this has got a length of one. So AB is gonna be, uh, let's see, let's do four squared plus one squared, right? So the length, well, it's going to be actually the square root of that, right? Let's do this. Let's back up. So AB is going to be 4 squared plus 1 squared equals, let's go with C squared, right? Because really that C squared is going to, the C is going to be the same as AB. So you know what? Let me just try this instead. Let's do this. AB squared there. How about that? A B squared is going to equal 4 squared plus 1 squared. So A B squared is going to be 16 plus 1. So A B squared is 17. So then A B is just going to be, because we take the square root of both of these, is going to be the square root of 17. Okay, so we figured out what AB is, and I know you're thinking, it's like, well, that was kind of a lot of work. That's just because I drew all this funky stuff out there. So let's do the same thing to find out what BC is and what AC is. So let's do B to C. That is 1, 2, 3, 4. And that is 1. So look, BC is the exact same thing as AB. So let's do this, BC squared is going to be 4 squared plus 1 squared also, right? So then let's just kind of cut to the chase because we just did all the math there. So we know that BC is going to be the square root of 17. So we know that those two sides are the same. So we know it's going to either be equilateral 
or isosceles, it's not going to be scalene, right? Scalene is where you have three different side lengths. So let's figure out what AC is going to be. That is what, 3 by 3. So AC squared is going to be 3 squared plus 3 squared. So AC squared is going to be 9 plus 9. So that is 18. So we square root both of those. And we get that AC is the square root of 18. Okay. So now we got square root 17, square root 17, and square root 18. So it's not going to be equilateral either. It's going to have to be isosceles. Right? So let's see, since A B and B C are equal and not equal to AC, the triangle is isosceles. Isosceles. I always have a hard time spelling that. Okay. So that is example two. Let's take a look at one more example and then we'll call it good. All right. And this is example four from page 207. Find B, and there's B, given that A is 3, negative 2, B is B, comma 1, and then they are also square root of 13 units apart. All right. So um, this one, let's we could do the graphing thing, and I'm also going to show you the um, distance formula way, which is actually probably a little bit easier on this. So let's take a look at both, though. Point A is at 3, negative 2. So there's point A. Um, let's see, I'm going to do that in red so it's easier to see. So 3, negative 2. So that's point A. And then B, we don't know how far over it is, but we do know it's somewhere up here on this line of 1. So it's somewhere up here. We don't know where. But we do know that, let's just fake it and say B is here. We do know that this here is the square root of 13 units apart to the B, right? So we got to figure that out. Again, this is going to be a little tricky, doing A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Uh, it's not going to be too bad, but it's going to be a little trickier. But we can draw this side here, and we know that this has got three units, and we know that this is a square root of 13 units. We just have to figure out what this is here, right? And again, it could also be possibly over here. So let's try that way first. I'll try it. I'll put the work over here just since it's next to the graph here. So a squared plus b squared is going to equal c squared. Okay, so again, here's the hypotenuse. So we know that the c is going to be square root of 13 squared. And then let's call a 3 squared. And then we're going to find b. All right, so 9 plus, not a, but 9 plus b squared equals root 13 squared gives us 13. Subtract 9. And we get that b squared equals 4. So square root those, and you get that b equals plus or minus 4. Oops, not 4, but 2, right? So the b could be at positive 2, or at this length here can be positive 2 from here. So it could be positive 2 here, or it could be negative 2. So it could also be over here. Okay, so it could either be this, whoa, it could be this triangle here, or it could also be, draw that in a different color here, it could also be this triangle here. All right, so B can equal, it's not going to be, B is not going to equal plus or minus 2, but B is going to, so B could equal positive 1 or 
that's at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So B can equal 1 or 5 by this here. And again, that's a little bit confusing, so let's try um, let's try doing this with the distance formula instead and see if that's any easier. And then you can kind of choose which one or whichever one you like. So distance equals square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared, right? So there's our distance formula. So we can plug all this stuff here into that distance formula, right? So this is x1, y1, x2, y2, and that's our distance, right? So let's just plug all those things in. Distance is the square root of 13 equals the square root of x2 is b minus 3 squared plus, and then we got y2, which is 1 minus negative 2 squared. Okay? So let's do this just to make our life easy right off the bat. If we square both sides, we get rid of the roots, right? Those roots go away. So we just end up with the square root of 13, oops, not the square root anymore because we just got rid of it. 13 equals b minus 3 squared plus 1 minus negative 2 is 3. So that's 1 plus 2 is 3, so that plus 3 squared, right? So 13 equals b minus 3 squared plus 9. Subtract 9 from both sides, and we get that b minus 3 squared, that goes away, equals 4, right? To get rid of that square, we can square root both sides, and then we get b minus 3 equals, again, when you take the square root, it's truly plus or minus 2, right? And then we add 3 to both sides. So we get b equals 3 plus or minus 2. Right? So let's work over here where there's some more room. So b is going to equal, let's do this. b is going to equal, we've got 3 plus 2 or b can equal 3 minus 2. So b equals 5 or b equals 1. All right, an exact same thing that we got over here. So again, it's up to you which way you think is easier. Um, this can be a little bit confusing because you have to look at the drawing and try to figure out where those points are. This can be a little confusing just because it's a little bit longer. Um, you're doing square roots and all that kind of stuff. But again, whichever way works for you is fine by me. Okay, That's all there is for this section, so if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Thanks.